हेलो दोस्तों वेलकम एंड वेलकम बैक टू ग्रो मेड टुडे इज द डे वन ऑफ डिस्कसिंग द इम्पॉर्टेंट टॉपिक्स विच यू मस्ट रीड फ्रॉम द बायो केमिस्ट्री सो दिस विल बी अ शॉर्ट क्विक रिविजन काइंड ऑफ वीडियो फॉर यू ऑल इन विच वी विल ट्राई टू कवर ऑल द इम्पॉर्टेंट टॉपिक्स द प्रीवियस ईयर क्वेश्चन देन इमेजेस एवरीथिंग I have already uploaded the video on the revision plan of the biochemistry. Uh, let me show it to you. Uh, so this is the plan. It is a four days plan, and daily I will be posting videos related to these topics. And also I will provide the notes in my Telegram channel, so you can watch the video and read these notes. And after reading reading these notes, you need to solve the MCQs. and the today's topic is the vitamins uh, we will be discussing the pathways and electron transport chain tca shuttles and the hmp let's get started so vitamins it is an important topic and from the vitamins two to three questions are asked every year so you need to read the source then the daily requirement then deficiencies and if it is deficient which kind of diseases occur so vitamin vitamin a questions are asked on the source which is the halibut and the cod fish oil and the deficiency it causes xerophthalmia and this is the bite out spot so image based question can be asked on the bite out spot so do look at the images also then moving on to the vitamin a deficiency then function it helps in the vision then epithelium differentiation and normal reproduction then moving on to the vitamin d questions are asked on the active form one liner question is asked mainly uh, which of the following is the active form of the vitamin d then its function that helps in the intestinal absorption of the calcium then if there is deficiency in children it will cause rickets and in adult osteoporosis then the vitamin k so usually questions are asked on its function that is the gamma carboxylation of glutamate and questions are also asked on its forms if it is deficient it causes neonatal hemorrhage then moving on to the vitamin e so usually questions are asked only on its function and that's all like uh, one liner was asked in the previous year which of the following vitamin is the most potent antioxidant and the answer was vitamin e then the vitamin c uh, so these are the sources the amla guava citrus fruit and the cabbage and the function is iron absorption so this is a very very important topic important point uh, because frequently this question is asked that vitamin helps in the absorption of the iron and if there is deficiency causes scurvy then moving on to the b complexes so vitamin b complexes thiamine is very very important and then questions are asked on its deficiency it causes beriberi and wernicke's encephalopathy and the marker is the transketolase and it is required for the oxidative decarboxylation then uh, b2 which is also called as riboflavin so you need to also uh, study these names then its deficiency causes angular stromatitis uh, chylosis and glossitis and the marker is the glutathione reductase then this is a very very important image and an important point a five star because every year this niacin question is asked so its deficiency causes pellagra and it presents as three d's dermatitis diarrhea and dementia most commonly seen in the maize eaters then the vitamin b5 which is also called as the pantothenic acid acts as a cofactor for the coenzyme a and deficiency causes burning feet syndrome then vitamin b6 so questions are asked mainly on its deficiency that it causes peripheral neuropathy in the question tingling sensation can be described then think in terms of b6 deficiency then also the marker that is the transaminase then b7 which is called as the biotin so this is also an important because uh, questions are asked on this also usually case based questions are asked so in a case they will be describing that uh, there will be raw consumption of egg like who are gym trainers or person who is going to the gym and he will be having alopecia then it is required for the carboxylation 
then the vitamin b9 very very important because it causes a very important defect that is the neural tube defect so image based questions can be asked on this neural tube defect so look at the images also then then this uh, vitamin b12 which is called acetylcobalamin so its deficiency causes anemia and the marker is the methyl malonic acid so this was a quick review of the vitamins and the type of questions asked from the vitamin for detailed explanation watch the video on the vitamins which i have already uploaded on my youtube the link is given in the description box then moving on to the pathways now we will learn about the pathways to make it easier and simpler first think that there are two uh, states one the fed state in which we have just eaten the food and another state is the fasting state so if you if you read this chart uh, thoroughly then you will be able to solve most of the mcqs asked from the pathways so let me explain it to you now in the fed state the hormone uh, which is active is the insulin and in the fasting state it is the glucagon so so when we eat food we usually consume the carbohydrates right and in the carbohydrates it breaks down into the glucose so what does insulin do is it decreases the blood glucose and it sends the glucose into the cells for the metabolism and whenever we eat food what happens is that this glucose goes into the cells and it builds the energy so it is called as the anabolic reaction and also this insulin causes one important reaction that is the dephosphorylation and this is carried out by the enzyme phosphodiesterase and it reduces the cyclic amp so by applying this concept you can think of some examples which are anabolic reaction like the glycolysis the glycogenolysis fatty acid synthesis so these all are the formation of the of the products which are stored and these products they are used in the fasting state okay so whenever you do fasting there will be no glucose in the body that means the diet glucose is not there so that time the glucagon will be working and what does this glucagon do is it increases the blood glucose level so the question is how does it increases the blood glucose level so it increases the blood glucose levels by breaking down the products which are stored like the glycogen then the fats and the proteins which are formed and stored these are broken down and the glucose is formed as this glucose is formed by breakdown of the molecules it is called as the catabolic reaction so anabolism means building up of the energy and catabolism means breakdown of the energy so by applying this concept you can also differentiate between the anabolic and the catabolic reactions easily so whenever the question is asked which of the following is a anabolic reaction or which of the following is the catabolic reaction think of these things and try to differentiate which pathway is occurring in which phase and you will be easily able to solve the mcq then another important reaction which glucagon does is the phosphorylation that is increasing the cyclic amp and it is done by using adenyl cyclase this was about the important pathways which are fed fasting then insulin glucagon and the anabolic catabolic reaction then moving on the questions are asked on the location so it is an important topic and a repeat topic one liner simple one liners are asked which pathway occurs in uh, which organelle okay so in this also you can remember it easily there is a simple way that the catabolic reactions all these occur in the mitochondria so by catabolic reactions you can recall the things which have learnt here that the glucagon is active it is a fasting state so in fasting state which all reactions are active those will be occurring in the mitochondria like the krebs cycle the electron transport chain then ketogenesis formation of 
beta oxidation of the fatty acid that is the breakdown of the fatty acid and the oxidative phosphorylation then in the cytoplasm the anabolic reactions are carried out as you can see here the examples of the anabolic reaction then both some reactions are there which occur in both cytoplasm and mitochondria that means few steps will occur in the cytoplasm and few in the mitochondria and the examples of these are the urea gluconeogenesis heme synthesis so all except kind of a question can be asked from this that all of the following occur in both mitochondria and cytoplasm except okay so these were some important things which you must learn about the pathways then moving on questions are asked on the pathways and the rate limiting enzyme so you need to mug up all this you need to actually by heart the pathway and its rate limiting enzyme like for example glycolysis it is the phosphofructokinase then glycogenesis glycogen synthase glycogenolysis phosphorylase so there is no need to remember the whole pathway as we do not have much time left and this time it's the time to do the smart work and not the hard work so if you remember only the rate limiting enzymes also it is more than enough because questions can be asked the simple one liners which of the following is the rate limiting enzyme of the glycolysis like that so these are the things which you need to mug up so i will also give you a on how to remember this because it is not easy so either write this in a paper and stick it on your study table or take a paper and a pen and write five to ten times like this the glycolysis phosphofructokinase glycolysis phosphofructokinase writing and speaking it loud do it three to four times and see how you will be able to remember the things then moving on to the electron transport chain so it is a must 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 do topic every year one question from the etc is a must it is a compulsory question so question is asked on its inhibitors and the etc it is actually made of five complexes so these are the names of the complexes complex one it is called as nadh dehydrogenase two succinate dehydrogenase three cytoreductase 4 cytooxidase and 5 f0 f1 particle so these are the inhibitors and questions are asked on its inhibitors like the complex one is inhibited by the phenobarbitone and retinone and there is another one compound something like amylobarbitone okay so there's another one compound then 2 is inhibited by the malonate 3 inhibited by the bal and the antimycin a 4 by the cyanide and 5 oligomycin and etracycloside. So this also you need to mug up these things. Inhibitors, it is better you write these things in a paper and stick it on your study table and daily look at these things. And then there are questions asked on the uncouplers of the ETC. So these are classified into two types physiological and the pharmacological so these are the examples of the physiological and these the examples of the pharmacological then moving on as you can see here this is the chart of the electron transport chain so what happens in the electron transport chain is there will be production of the atp by using the nadph so this nadph it travels through the complexes and various reactions happen and it is and the final product from formed is the ATP. So the uncouplers, these act in between the complex 4 and the complex 5 and they inhibit the formation of the ATP. Then moving on to the TCA Krebs cycle. So questions are asked usually on the inhibitors of the Krebs cycle and the cycle intermediates. So this is the image of the TCA cycle. If you do not have time, then there's no need to mug up this whole image because, because it will not be asked in the exam. I have attached this image here to just make it easier for you guys. Uh, the components and the reactions happening, there's no need to mug it up. The thing you need to remember is the inhibitors that the malonate, it is inhibited by the succinate dehydrogenase, then arsenite fluoroacetate and fluorocitrate it inhibits the echinitase 
so these are the enzymes of the tca cycle and these enzymes are inhibited by these substances then moving on to cycle intermediates so these are the intermediates which are formed from these components this also you need to mug up you need to buy hard these things because simple one liner can be asked and this aceto oxaloacetate and the aspartate this was asked in the jan 24 then moving on to the shuttles there are two important shuttles which are required for the transport of the nadph because nadph is a product that cannot cross the mitochondrial membrane easily so this shuttle help it to transfer it from the cytoplasm to the mitochondria and these shuttles they are present in the inner mitochondrial membrane and these are the mallet shuttle and the glycerol phosphate shuttle so as you can see here in this image that the mallet shuttle this is the mallet shuttle in which the mallet and the oxaloacetate they carry the nadph because it cannot directly go into the cytoplasm okay and likewise this is the glycerol 3 phosphate shuttle in which the nadh is carried by the glycerol phosphate okay so then moving on there is another shuttle that is the citrate shuttle and it transports nadph and acetyl coa for the fatty acid synthesis then moving on to hmp shunt which is also called as the pentose phosphate pathway the questions are asked on the products what products are formed that is the nadph is formed and ribose 5 phosphate is formed which helps in the formation of the dna and the rna and what does nadph do is helps in the fatty acid synthesis lipid synthesis and cholesterol synthesis so the other points which you must remember from the HMP is that it is an anabolic pathway and it is activated by the insulin as we have read earlier that the anabolic pathways these are activated by the insulin and the catabolic pathways activated by the glucagon. Then the rate limiting enzyme glucose 6-phosphate dehydrogenase another very important question from this which you must remember is the G6PD deficiency. Whenever it is deficient, it causes hemolytic anemia. That is, in the RBCs, there will be defective oxidation due to which the RBCs will start bursting. That is, there will be damaging of the RBCs and it will cause hemolytic anemia then the next topic the urea cycle which is also called as the ornithin cycle so it occurs in liver and occurs in both mitochondria and cytoplasm so this was a previous year question its rate limiting enzyme it is the cps1 and questions are asked on the urea the structure of the urea so this is the structure of the urea questions are asked that one ammonia sorry nitrogen one nitrogen comes from which ammonia which product and it is the ammonium ammonium gives one nitrogen for the formation of the urea and one nitrogen comes from the aspartate so another important question asked from this is that for the urea cycle the ammonium is carried for the urea cycle the ammonia is transported from the brain using which of the following material so from the brain it is the glutamine amino acid which transports the ammonia another important point is that this ornithine transcarbamylase which is an enzyme required in the urea cycle this is absent in brain and that's why urea cycle does not occur in the brain so that's it for the day one guys tomorrow uh, the plan is already provided and we will be discussing about the carbohydrates so that's it for today we have discussed about the vitamins and the important pathways and the rate limiting enzymes and the other things which you must remember so after watching this video today you must read these all points 
by heart them practice them and then you need to solve the mcq the mcq you can solve it from the fmge solution or from the marrow q bank so that's it in this video thank you so much for watching this video let's meet for the day 2 tomorrow morning at 10 o'clock till then happy studying bye bye